Hi, this is Patrick Sullivan. Welcome to my shop. In three previous videos, I showed how to make some micro tools, very small chisels and gouges that could be used for very accurate detail work such as inlay and marquetry and for carving intricate details. In this video and the next, I'll show how to make tools that cut on their sides like knives. Although I want to show how to make very small knives, I'm actually going to demonstrate with two knives that are not all that small. It's just so much easier for you to see the process and for me to photograph it with somewhat larger blades. However, the techniques that you'll use for tiny blades will be exactly the same. I'm going to make two knives, one in this video and one in the video that follows. In the first video, I will use hand tools for most of the blade work. In the second video, I will show how some simple power tools can be employed. The first knife has a shape that many carvers find useful. It allows you to incise lines and make plunge cuts. The fine point allows it to cut into narrow corners and to make undercuts. I started with a piece of 01 steel that I bought online through Amazon. If you've watched my previous videos, you know why I think that trying to start with some salvaged piece of mystery steel is a mistake. Virtually nothing to gain and lots of disadvantages. The strip I bought was 1 half inch wide and only 1 16th inch thick. Starting with a blank that's already about the right thickness saves a lot of work in shaping the blade. You could draw the shape you want directly onto the strip of steel with a pencil or a fine felt tip pen. The more accurate way is to paint layout fluid on, let it dry, and then scratch the design in with an awl or a scribe. I chose to create my blade shapes in a drawing program on my computer. That makes it easy to get exactly the dimensions and angles you want. I then print them on paper and uh, paste the design directly onto the blank using a Scotch permanent glue stick. This is by far the most convenient glue for this purpose and it dries in seconds and it's easy to remove the paper when you're all done. The best way to cut tight curves is with a drill. However, this carries some danger. The drill bit tends to grab the very small piece of steel, and if it gets away from you, it'll whip it around into your fingers with a lot of force. Hold on tight, or use a vise or a clamp. Alternatively, you can just cut straight lines and then form the curves with a round file. This steel arrives annealed to its softest condition, so it cuts quickly and easily with a hacksaw or files. Hand tools are a good choice for these very small blades. You're not removing very much steel. If you have a disc sander, or even better, a narrow belt sander, a strip sander, you can speed the work a little. Once the outline is where you want it, then you need to taper the sides to form a cutting edge. The safest and most controlled way of doing this is with a file. To support the small blade while you shave off layers of steel, I've found that filing against my finger works pretty well. After rough shaping, you want to remove all the tool marks and scratches. Start with 150 or 180 grit sandpaper and move to 220 and then to 320. When it appears completely free of scratches, go over it with 600 grit silicon carbide paper. This will polish the surface and it may reveal scratches or pits that were invisible before. Sand these out thoroughly while the steel is soft. Trying to remove them after the steel is hardened is agonizingly slow. We harden these knives exactly the same way we did with chisels and gouges. Heat the blade in the flame of a propane torch until the entire cutting portion of the blade is a bright orange red. This is about 1700 degrees Fahrenheit. Then plunge the blade straight down into any kitchen oil. 
you have about two seconds to immerse the blade once you remove it from the flame. Keep it in the oil until it's cool enough to touch. These blades require tempering even more than chisels or gouges. Temper them in a kitchen oven for 30 minutes at 400 degrees and then quench in cold water. They will come out gray or black with a hard tenacious layer of iron oxide on them. Remove it with 320 grit paper and then polish the blades with 600 grit until there are no scratches. I made a fairly thin straight handle which is a good shape for very small or delicate knives because one option for intricate cuts is to hold the knife like a pencil. I will make a more elaborate handle for the second knife in the next video. I cut two strips of hardwood about 5 eighths inch wide and about 3 sixteenths inch thick and about 6 inches long. Trace the shape of the blade tang onto the inside of one strip. Then cut a shallow rabbet to accommodate the blade in both strips. A small router makes fast work of this, but it's not at all necessary. A few strokes with a chisel will cut the rabbet, and there's no need for the fit to be flawless. We will set the blade in epoxy, which will fill any voids or deep cuts and lock the blade in place. Now tape the two handle strips together and sand and shape the end where the blade will emerge. This is so much easier to do now before the blade is installed. The rest of the handle can be left raw, but get the business end tapered, shaped, and fine sanded now. Thoroughly mix equal parts of 5 minute epoxy, apply generously to both wood strips, insert the blade, and clamp the wood strips together. Wipe away any epoxy squeeze out with a paper towel and then let it set overnight. Epoxy becomes firm in 10 minutes or so, depending upon the temperature, but it takes many hours to develop real strength. Finally, trim the handle to its finished length. I like them to be about 5 inches long. Remove the sharp edges with a plane or a rasp, and while you're at it, add any further shaping you desire. A strip sander will make short work of rounding the handle into something comfortable to hold. Sand to 320 grit and apply a couple of coats of shellac. This seals the wood and it dries in seconds to minutes. Buff with a gray 3M pad or with steel wool and give it one more coat. The handle should feel smooth and have a little sheen. If you want more, give it a coat of urethane varnish right over the shellac. That's it. A wide variety of shapes and sizes are possible using this process. I will show you a little different and larger knife in the next video, as well as an additional way to grind the bevels.